So hey, what up? So I just watched uh, Tenet. I, I just got out of the theater. I don't normally make these uh, videos of just like, just getting out of the theater, but I, I think I'd like to, to, to explain my thoughts, to talk about what I liked about it. And Tenet was great. I, I, I always call it Tenant, but it's Tenet, you know, because it's uh, um, a pet. Pel palindrome that's right yeah so, so the term is palindrome you know saying forward and back because this is christopher nolan's new time travel movie and uh, it was it was good i i enjoyed it you know like you know crazy right like tenant was good um yeah it, it was great it's not not nolan's best you know like like oh, i'll start it right here it wasn't perfect there were some problems with it you know but there were there was i would like to see it again i'll probably go see it in a couple more days but I'd like to see it again, definitely. Yeah, I'll probably go on uh, Wednesday. This is Monday when I'm recording it. Uh, I'm watching it fucking late because my, my city, Auckland, in New Zealand, has been locked down. Uh, we got locked down for an extra couple of weeks out of nowhere, which is a pain in the ass. Fucking COVID. But um, but we're back. We're back. I, I, it's, uh, we got out of lockdown at midnight last night, so I came as soon as I could. First, I'm Max showing. So what did I, what did I think? It was, it was great, right? So, uh, I won't spoil anything. I, I won't, won't spoil the movie. I'll, maybe I'll do a spoiler vi video after seeing it another time. Yeah, I can talk more about the spoilers. So, you know, it's a time travel movie, you know, as you might know. And it was covered very well. It's, the biggest problem with it is it's very explanatory. You know, like, like they really just shove the exposition down your throat. Just, mm, just fucking deep throat that shit. And it, it gets a bit annoying. So obviously when you talk about a time travel movie, you compare it to Primer, right? That's the best time travel movie out there, you know? It's, uh, well, it's great, right? And what's great about Primer is how technical it is. But it's not explanatory. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't cram all the information down your throat so you understand, right? If you're smart, you understand. Because it shows, like, two intellectuals, like, two people who understand what is going on, discuss what what the situation they're in like real fucking people would how a lot of time travel movies work is they have a have a smart person who understands how time travel works in their universe explain to a newbie like us you know the as you have the the protagonist be the stand-in for the viewer and they get the exposition crammed down their throat and we're learning when they're learning you know that's the trope that is used and it gets a bit annoying and it's in this movie it it's not as explanatory as it could have been like it didn't have an it didn't have any narration at the start of the movie like it didn't have like text come on the bottom saying you know in 2044 they invented time travel they didn't have shit like that so like not like looper you know the movie looper i do like looper but that one falls into a lot of the over explanation in a lot of sense but then it like acts like it doesn't never mind never mind we're not talking about looper we're talking about this tenant tenant <laughs> fuck i can never say it right so with that it was a bit annoying like any more talk about the time travel is too much spoiler because any any conversation about time travel you know is explaining the plot right so i don't want to explain it too much but another big problem i had is the the plot was a bit not there i think that the premise was great it, it was really smart it, 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 it probably makes like scientific sense surely i'm, I'm no <laughs> i'm no big brain my, my brain is quite smooth if you can see but um yeah i i think that the the time travel was done very smartly but the framing around it wasn't that good because a lot of time travel movies like back to the future the time travel was the fr is the framing but in this, the time travel is the concept. I, I don't know if I'm explaining that right, but like in a lot of other time travel movies, there's a whole story going on that has kind of has nothing to do with the time travel. The the framing of the time travel was was just to get them in the place. Like in Back to the Future One, the time travel is just there for the conundrum of I gotta get home type situation. But you could have that if you're stuck in another country or something. It doesn't have to be stuck in time. And like he has this whole problem of trying to you know. Hook hook his mom and dad up, right? Get them together so he can be born. You know, it's not necessarily about the time travel. Where something like Primer is, you know, and something like this is. It, it's about the time travel. But I feel like the... Yeah, how it, how it come... The rest of the plot around the time travel is, is, is a bit annoying. It doesn't... Like, when I talk about 
in a future video if I talk about the plot, I will explain my biggest issues with it. But maybe like a future watch will fix it. I'm not sure. Um, the score was excellent, like all Nolan films. Far too loud though. Like I went and saw IMAX, and maybe that's the issue. But a, a thing I found with Nolan films, maybe you know, post Dark Knight, you know, like in uh, Inception, you've got Interstellar, you've got uh, Dunkirk. All of them are too fucking loud. He needs a new sound mixer, man. It is like it's not. The, the problem is you can't hear the dialogue when they're fucking talking. We're, we're, <laughs> the dialogue when they're talking. When the sound is is doing big bongs going on, right? Which, yeah, I, I really enjoy the score. But then you can't fucking hear what the people are saying. And maybe, they're, they're, but maybe that's what they want. But that only makes sense if the music is diegetic, right? So if, if say, in the social network, when, when they're in the club and you can barely hear them, that makes sense because they can't fucking talk in the in that setting but if if it's it's just in a normal time and there's there's non-diegetic sound you know they've added that sound in you know it does it doesn't they don't need to be yelling over the sound you should be able to fucking hear it it is so annoying it it's frustrating and i think it, it brings down the movie like when i eventually watch it like at home on the tv i can put subs on but the fucking movies don't put subs on for me they're at the theater so i'm just fucked and so the, the actors, they're, they're great as well, right? So the guy from Black Klansman, uh, John David Washington, he, he was awesome. I, I really enjoyed him. He's a, like a, he's like this up and coming actor. I really like, I'm just going to bring his uh, image up. See what other movies he's been in. Like other than Black Klansman. Malcolm X. How did he play Malcolm? Yeah, well, he was in the Malcolm X movie. I haven't seen that. It's by um, the guy that made Black, uh, yeah, Spike Lee, who made Black Klansman. But um, yeah, I need to check out more of his movies because he is, he's excellent. He is, he's really good. He's really enjoyable to watch. Um, like, I loved him in Black Klansman. He's great in this. And Robert Patterson is, he's becoming my favorite actor. I really feel. His role in The Lighthouse, uh, he's, he's being Black, um, uh, Batman soon, apparently, but we'll, we'll see how that goes. But the, yeah, Lighthouse, The Good Time by the, the, the Safi Brothers. Safi Brothers? I think that's, that's their names. Yeah, they're, they're, and it's excellent. Yeah, he's a great actor. And you know, the the villain was okay. His his Russian accent was a bit annoying to me, but eh, it's all right. He he was also in um in Dunkirk. He was one of the like the the captains in Dunkirk, if I remember, if I recall, which isn't one. Yeah, you know, Dunkirk's not my favorite Nolan, but yeah, uh, very enjoyable. Um, oh, the 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 score, like they they had this one theme that keeps playing through the movie, like like most movies do, right? They have like a, a single theme uh, in in a score that comes up. And it was a complete ripoff of Annihilation. Like, uh, the, uh, Alex Garland's Annihilation completely ripped off. It, it was, it was actually crazy. It was, it was, it was so clearly the same song. Like, like, or just the same concept. Like, Nolan had dipped all the people that created that sound. I don't know who scored this movie. You know, like, obviously, no, Nolan's an He, he, he has a hand in this shit, right? So this is his movie. So, like, he would have known. And it, it did kind of bug me. And guess what? It's a good it's a good score because it was great annihilation. <laughs> it's the best part of annihilation. But why why uh why does it have to be in this movie? It's it's a bit weird. Um, yeah, the, this movie is very smart. You know, <laughs> like I I do definitely need to see it again. Like that's such a Nolan trope, right? Oh, I just saw the new Nolan movie. I definitely need to see it like fifty times. No, one more time. I need to see it one more time. Just to see some of the earlier stuff they put in. Like, definitely in the opening scene. They had this opening scene that definitely has a lot of, like, shit. You know, time travel bullshit that I need to look at, you know? And I need to double check. But, yeah, it's it was it was really enjoyable. Uh, yeah, so... Like, I really enjoyed it. I've, I'm giving it four stars out of five at the moment. So that's, what? What? Eight out of ten? Yeah, eight out of ten. It could go up, it could go down, depending on my next watch. That's why I have it at the moment. It's not Nolan's best, you know. It's no Memento. It's no Dark Knight. It's no Interstellar, I guess. I think even Interstellar's better than this. It's no The Prestige. But, you know, it's better than The Dark Knight Rises. It's better than Following. It's better than um, Insomnia, which I didn't really like that much. Um, well, I thought it was okay. But, uh, yeah. So, first viewing, I really enjoyed it. I can't wait to see it again. You guys... Yeah, ri risk getting getting COVID to go see it. You know, do you even need your grandparents that much? I, I don't know. You know, you know no one's 
no one's going to win best, best director this year. He has to. He has to, right? Who else is making movies? Other than, um, well, Charlie Kaufman has a new movie coming out soon. Oh my god, Charlie Kaufman. Ah, oh. Charlie Kaufman gets screenwriter and best picture. No one can get best director. All right? There you go, boys. There you go. I've, 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 I've said it. <laughs> this is my future predictions. I haven't even seen Charlie Kaufman's new movie isn't out yet. Uh, I'm thinking about ending things. Coming out on ne- uh, Netflix on the 4th of September, I think. So, almost there. Almost there, guys. Um, yeah, so I really enjoyed it. Can't wait to go see it again. And it's really long, though, which might get a bit tiresome. And especially some of the bits that might have lulled. But we will see. So, go watch that. Oh, the fucking... So, I haven't been in the movies in, like, a few weeks because of lockdown. And now that I was back, I forget how annoying the trailers are before the movie. The, the, the trailer, the, all the trailers just remind me how shit, um, you know, Hollywood is now. Superhero movie after superhero movie after remake after remake after fucking, you know, movie that's like the fifth in the installment or whatever. It's so annoying. You know, you got like the Black Widow trailer. You got the, you, you got the Wonder Woman 2 trailer. You've got the new Mutants trailer. Then you got the new James Bond trailer, which, you know, I'll, I'll go watch. Like, James Bond's good. Like, especially the new ones are good. I didn't like Spectre that much. But, you know, like, Skyfall and Casino Royale and Quantum of Souls were all good. And the class- there's some good classic ones. But it's like the 50th movie. Have some original movies. And that's what this is. Tenet. It's a Tenet is an original movie. Nolan brings original blockbusters. He's the new Spielberg. I'm shaking the camera. Sorry. He's the new Spielberg. Like, he doesn't make the, the, the greatest movies all the time. He makes- he makes good, he makes great, he makes great, like, blockbuster movies that are smarter than the average movie, and you can enjoy them, and, and, the, and the, the average person likes them, and that's what's great. The average person likes Nolan, and it's like Tarantino, right? Tarantino and Nolan make great films, and the average person likes it. You've got to fucking love it, right? That, uh, you know, like, I, I wish people like, uh, like Charlie Kaufman, or, or I guess Daniel Villeneuve has good, um, uh, you know, everyone loves his movies, but you know what I mean? Like, like they are blockbuster directors that aren't fucking hacks. You know, they're not, they're not hacky and I love it. It's great. So I uh, go support Nolan. This movie, I, I want it. It's probably going to be like the best movie of the year because of fucking lockdowns, fucking up everything. Right. But we will see. But yeah, the, the Oscar's looking good for this movie. And I can't wait to go see it again. You guys check it out. Let me know how you thought in the comments. And let me know if you want me to do more movie reviews like this. Just off the cuff. I wrote a few notes just so I remember a few things. But this is all off the, you know, off my noggin. So, yeah. Cheers.